Shalom. I'm pleased to you from Exploring of the Bible Land. This is the fifth video about Caesarea. If you haven't seen yet my previous four videos, I recommend that you watch them from first in order. In fact, all my videos are in order like a series. In this video, after brief summary of the rest of Caesarea's history, I will explain the Roman aqueduct in Caesarea. 66. Caesarea is the outbreaking point of the Jewish rebellion. 240. Father Origen wrote Hexapla in Caesarea. This book compares six copies of the Bible, and he built the Caesarea Theological Library. At one time, the collection was about 30,000. In 640, the Arabs destroyed this library during their invasions. 330 to 339, Eusebius was the first bishop. During this period, he wrote Onomasticon and History of the Church. The book Onomasticon is the oldest biblical geographic commentary. Eusebius attended the Nicaea Religious Conference in 325. He already used Confessions of Faith in the Church of Caesarea. This conference adopted Eusebius' Confession. This confession became the basement of the Nicanum. Therefore, Caesarea is a really important place to the history of Christianity. 640 captured by Arabs and soon after controlled by Muslims. Muslims built a huge mosque upon the Byzantine church. Since then, the political and economic significance of Caesarea has been greatly reduced. May 17, 1101, the crusader captured Caesarea. The Garnier Knights lived here. 1251, Louis IX of France rebuilt the fortress of Caesarea. The fortress that can be seen in Caesarea was built at that time. 1255, Bavars of Mamluk defeated the crusader and completely destroyed Caesarea. Since then, Caesarea has been in ruins. 1884, Ottoman Turkic government moved some of the Muslims to live here from Bosnia. The mosque they built is now used as a restaurant. 1948, Jewish militia Palmach, led by Isaac Rabin, has taken over this area. After the State of Israel is found, numerous excavations have taken place with many scholars. 2000, Caesarea was temporarily registered with UNESCO. We have compiled a brief summary of Caesarea's history. It was a dramatic repetition of ups and downs. For those who have watched it in order from the first video, they may have drawn an overall picture. The last point in this picture is the Roman aqueduct in Caesarea. Because there is no river or spring in Caesarea, Herod the Great had to be solved the water problem when he built this city. He solved it by bringing water from other areas. There is already an example of this in the Old Testament. First of all, King Hezekiah made a Siloam, which we know well. It is recorded that the water was brought to, into the city. Second King chapter 20, verse 20. The book of Isaiah says twice aqueduct. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 3, chapter 36, verse 2. Since the period of the Old Testament, there was a water channel or water tunnel or aqueduct. There was the technology to bring water from another place. By the way, as the years pass, when the city grows, the demand for water also grows. 
the technology to bring water had to be developed. The people who developed this technology to the highest level were the Roman civil engineers. Water flows from high levels to low levels. Therefore, in order to import water from a water source to a water supply, the height adjustment is the most important technique. High places that interrupt the flow of water can be carved out or tunneled. Or, if there is a low place, create a bridge. The Romans developed this water bridging system. It's called aqueduct. Because the Roman has a technique of concrete, therefore they could be built on a huge scale aqueduct. Herod the Great also decided to use this method to supply water to Caesarea. Sunni is at the end of Mount Carmel. From this place, he made an aqueduct and brought water to Caesarea. Sunni is about 11.2 km from Caesarea. There is still a Roman theater. Beyond this theater, there is an ancient pool. In this area, there were several springs. From here, he brought the water to Caesarea. The Roman aqueduct made by Herod the Great still remains until to this day. It's amazing and fantastic. By the way, if you get closer, there's not only one waterway on the aqueduct. There are two waterways on both sides. The arch is not one. If you look under the middle of the arch, you can find the double arches in side by side. And on the waterway on the Mediterranean side, one more small waterway is placed there. In fact, there are three waterways. Number one was made by Herod the Great. Number two was created by Emperor Hadrianus, who came to the land of Israel to quell the Bar Kokhba rebellion from 132 to 135. In that time, a large number of Roman troops were stationed. They needed more water. So, in addition to the aqueduct made by Herod the Great, they made an additional aqueduct. In 1950, while excavating this aqueduct, a stone with the Roman 10th Legion logo was found. So, it was assumed this additional aqueduct had been made in Emperor Hadrianus. And the smallest third channel was made by the Crusaders. After Arabs seized Caesarea, the fame of this city was disappeared. Caesarea was increasingly devastated in Muslim period. Therefore, the aqueduct in Caesarea was left unused. After Crusaders built the fortress in Caesarea, they constructed a new waterway upon abundant aqueduct. This aqueduct changed his figure according to the demand for water. In the end, it looks like it is today. All of these three waterways are called a high-level aqueduct. The high-level aqueduct is relatively high, so it was named this. In comparison, there is a low-level aqueduct. In the Byzantine period, Caesarea was three times larger than it was during Herod the Great. The population has grown, then they needed more water. So they brought the water from the Tanin River, about five kilometers away from north. The Hebrew meaning of Tanin is crocodile. In fact, crocodiles had been seen here until 19th century. What is unusual is that they built a dam on the Tanin River to raise the water level and then they brought water. The dam remains today. Until modern times, the water of this dam was used as a water power mill. Why did they make this aqueduct in low level? It was because of two cross 
with a high level of conduct that was already in use. And it was because of to make sure their roots will not get twisted with each other. They have to cross and pass each other aqueduct at least at one point. That's why they made it in a low level that could pass under the arches of the high level aqueduct. This low level waterway is called a low level aqueduct. Let me go inside of the low level aqueduct. In fact, as you can see now, the inside is very wide. That is a lot of water that could prove. The high level aqueduct is approximately 8 meters high from the sea level and the low level aqueduct is about 5.5 meters above the sea level. Why did we say that the Roman aqueduct is the top grade of the Roman architecture? The answer is the inclination of the Roman aqueduct. When comparing the height of the springs of Sunni and the end aqueduct of Caesarea, the average inclination is 20 cm per kilometer. Then, if you calculate, it will be 100 m to 2 cm and 10 m to 2 mm. Personally, I was really surprised when I found out about it. Why did they make this in a minimum slope? This is because the height of the waterway in front of Caesarea ensures that water pressure can be supplied to each house in the city. If the end of the aqueduct is higher, the water pressure will also be higher. In this way, I think it is no exaggeration to say that the aqueduct is one of the best examples of the Roman architecture. By the way, no matter how precisely they made it, if the inclination is changed, the water will not flow. This actually happened in the Byzantine era. Then they put three clay pipes in the waterway above the aqueduct and adjusted the inclination. Even today, these pipes are remained. There is a small village called Betanina in front of the end of Carmel Mount. Here, you can see the high-level aqueduct, which has been silent standing for over 2,000 years. You can also see three clay pipes inserted for tilt adjustment. We discussed about the Roman aqueduct in Caesarea. In order to maintain Caesarea, Herod the Great invested heavily in the construction of this aqueduct. In the future, we will visit many biblical places through exploring the Bible land. Each time, you will see that all places have a stable water supply system because water is life. Thank you for watching these five videos about Caesarea. In the next video, I have prepared 360-degree video about Caesarea. In every video, I have been focusing on the description and I haven't been able to capture the details of what's going on around us. You can get the details with the 360-degree video. I kindly ask you to watch it. The following exploring place will be Tel Mugito. I will continue to ask you to watch. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.